Hi, boys and girls, it's Miss Harling. I'm going over tonight's homework. Today is Monday, November 9th, 2020. During class, for my class and Mrs. Graham's class, I finished going over arrays, so this is your homework. At the bottom, you should see page 169. It says chapter three. At the top, it says practice and homework, lesson 3.5. It also says model with arrays. So that's what we've been learning, how to use an array to model multiplication. So the first one's been done for you. It says, write a multiplication sentence for the array. So here they showed you there are three rows and there are seven in each row. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 is your product. It is the answer. So I'm not going to do number 2 because I think you can figure that out. They've already made the multiplication equation for you. You just have to give the product or the answer. So let's go down and do number 3. This time they want you to draw an array to find the product. Here you have four times two. The first number or factor tells you how many rows you need. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four. And how many in each row is the second factor? So I need two in each row. So row, row one should have two. Row two should have two. Row three should have two and row four should have two. So four rows of two gives me eight. Two, four, six, eight. I counted by twos. You may do that for number four. I'm not gonna do that one for you. All right, moving on. Let's see if I wanna do five or six. Let's do number six. It says, Miss DeMio directs the school choir. She has the singers stand in three rows. There are eight singers in each row. So what are we doing here? Three rows, eight singers in each row. So we're doing three rows of eight. Please make sure you circle and underline. You should circle the numbers three and eight and underline rows and singers in each row. We know each is a key word, it tells us to multiply. So I'm gonna show three rows of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my first row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my third row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my third row. If I count them up, Again, that would be three rows of eight, which is three times eight. What do you think that would be? As our product, the answer would be 24. So there are 24 singers that are singing in the school choir, all right? At the very bottom, you know I always do the writing, so I'm gonna do that now. It says, write. Write a word problem that can be solved by drawing an array. Then draw the array and solve the problem. So let's do that now. I'm gonna use my name. You can use my name, your name, or someone else's name. Sonia is baking, let's say, two rows of five sugar cookies. Okay, and I'll stop there for a minute so everybody can copy. Please copy that sentence. I'll zoom in just a little bit. Sonia is baking two rows of five sugar cookies. So I have two rows with five in each row. Question, how many and I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can see that. How many cookies are in all? Question mark. So please copy. 
Sonia is baking two rows of five sugar cookies. How many cookies are in all? I'll give you a minute or so to copy those sentences and then I'm gonna draw the array. All right, again, pause the video if you need to and then you can come back to where I am. But right now, I am going to make the array on the right-hand side of that paper at the bottom of page 169. I'm gonna show two rows, five in each row. This is row one, this is row two. In this first row, I need to make five. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So, two rows of five gives me how many cookies? 10. 10 is your final answer. Sonia made 10 cookies. All right, makes sense? Please make sure you draw the array. Please make sure that you write the question. All of that has to be in your answer. Sonia is baking two rows of five sugar cookies. How many cookies are there in all? Two times five is 10. And here comes my daughter. So I'll wait till she comes into the house before I keep going. All right, she's here, but now I'm gonna keep going. Again, pause the video if you needed to. All right, Ms. Harling is not gonna do number one and I'm not doing number two. So I'm gonna go down and let's see if I'm gonna do three or four. All right, I'm going to do three because that one looks a little confusing. It says, use the table to find who traveled 700 miles farther than Paul during the summer vacation. So here's a table of all the people, Paul, Andrew, Bonnie, Tara, and Susan, and how many miles they traveled to get wherever they were going for their summer vacation. But they only want us to focus on Paul and they also want us to focus on one other person who drove 700 miles farther. So please underline who, I should start there, who traveled 700 miles farther than Paul. Please underline that part of the problem. Who traveled 700 miles farther than Paul? Paul in the table shows us that he only traveled 233 miles. So 700 miles farther than that would be, we would add those together. 700 and 233 for Paul, adding them together will tell us who traveled farther. That means they went a longer distance, which means their number has to be larger. Zero plus three is three. 0 plus 3 is 3, 7 plus 2 is 9. Who in the chart has a distance of 933 miles? If you said Tara, you are correct. That should be your answer for number 3. She traveled 700 miles more than Paul because 700 plus 233 is 933 miles. All right, that one's done. Now at the bottom, let's see if I'm gonna do five or six. Let's see. Okay, let's do six. Look at this bar and it says, which bar would be the longest on a bar graph of the data? Now, this is not a bar graph. This is just a table and it's telling you the number of votes for your favorite pizza topping. You've got cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, and sausage, and it tells you how many people voted for each of those toppings. The question is, which bar would be the longest if we made a bar graph of this data? We would have to make a bar for cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, and sausage. Which bar would be the longest? Because that's the bar where most people voted for the, for the topping they like the most. So which bar would we make the longest, the cheese, the pepperoni, the vegetable, or the sausage. If you said cheese, you are correct. 
Five is the largest number there. It's larger than four, it's larger than one, and it's larger than three. So if we created this table into a bar graph, kind of like what you saw up here for number four, the bar that would be the longest would be the cheese bar because that's the bar that has the most votes. All right, I am done. I got under 10 minutes or at 10 minutes. So I did a lot of it with you. The rest is for you to do on your own. We will go over it tomorrow on Tuesday. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for watching. Bye.